goodness. Anyway, Chad, I think we get this going. I think we do. Uh, especially with how long it takes us to go from season to season. I think we get right into this and do what we have to do. It is the off season 2025. And we have the re-sign phase to kick us off. And again, a reminder, Ryan Suter is going to be our new head coach, hopefully. And uh, we have a forced offer sheet. Thanks to Mr. B major. However, um, he said he was unaware Originally, what he was going to do was do the add XF option, add an X factor. It had already been used. He didn't know that could only be used once a night. So he's like, oh, I'll just do this other one instead. Uh, he left it up to me as to which one we would do. We probably will end up doing the forced offer sheet, though. Um, but yeah, as devs uses the add X factor option instead. Thank you, devs. Very, very kind of you. So turns out both are going to happen. So that's great. That's great. Uh, and Palms uses overpay in negotiating. That's that's great. You guys are just we've. Yep. It's been a minute and 10 seconds. Here we are. Here we are. OK. Well, I have to figure out how exactly I want to do the whole XF thing uh, as Matthew uses sit down. OK. Yep. All right, so we'll have a sit-down suspension to do. Why the hell not? In fairness, the, the sit-down, I should say you blew it because it's not the right time of the season, but I, I might be nice. I might be. And then Palms fan, make sure that our next trade is a Melnick trade, which again could also be viewed as mistimed and potentially wasted. That's the question. If you misuse them, what do we do with them? I've been nice sometimes. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. A lot of people in chat are saying they wasted him. I'll uh, I'll let you vote. I'll let you vote on it. I'll let you, I'll let you guys vote on it. You guys can please yourselves with this. Uh, mistimed channel points. Honor it, or they wasted it. And while I figure out what we're gonna do with everything else. You guys can vote on that. Again, refresh if you have to. I'd knock those glasses off your head. Would you, though? Would you, Grens Microwave? What was BBG's fork taken as a username? <laughs> uh, Matthew, it's... it's uh, so then the rules page there, some of them can only be redeemed at... Um, at certain times. Also, Scalded Ferret using the Fire Random Scout. So that's fun. Oh, goodness. All right. So we'll see what I can do here. We'll see what I can do. Let's see what we got. Uh, goalie wise, we're going to leave Askarov unqualified for the moment because he's asking for way too much money. Um, so we're going to go ahead and qualify him on the last day and then potentially try to trade him. Although my Melnick uh, next trade might be a Melnick trade, depending on the vote. If I use an over, if I use an underpay, can I use it to try and get a player a good deal? Um, it would have to be at least a million less than what they um, than what they're asking for. So technically, yeah, that could be a helpful one for me. Or it could screw me over because a player won't accept the deal. So uh, Akira Schmidt wasn't that bad this year, kind of. I mean, only got into a couple of games. Actually, you were pretty bad. Uh, yeah, you're you're just gonna go. You're just gonna go. Uh, and Jet Greaves as well. We'll let you go for now. Alnafeld's still here. We'll have to figure out the AHL goaltending situation, but Hugo will likely end up being the starter unless he improves too much. He was very close to AHL goaltender of the year at a certain point. So, uh, by the way, that vote for mistimed channel points. Chat votes in favor of they wasted it. So uh, the sit-down and the Melnick rule, again, the sit-down is for a suspension. The team's not even set yet. And the Melnick rule is for a trade, but we're not currently exploring a trade. So chat elects to police themselves. And um, yeah, that's that. Don't mistime your usage. Make sure you do it around the time that it has to happen. But that was chat's decision. I was down with honoring it, but... Chat voted on it, so there we go. So I do still have a big list of things to do here, though. 
All right, defensively. Defensively. What do we got? What do we got? Don't know what I want to do with Wills. B Pro Cop will end up staying. Uh, Jake Livingstone can go. He's just been an AHL for us. Strider, what's going on? If I use an overpay, can I pick the player? It would be the next contract that I have to honor. Uh, we already have an overpay in the uh, in the pipeline here. So, but no, it wouldn't be this specific player. It would just be the very next one. As we are going to sign Dylan McKinnon to his ELC. Doesn't look like Ansem's. One of the uh, he bigs will ever end up being signed. And of course, Dmitry Zaitsev, who is now infamous, at least for me. Uh, on the wing, we're going to wait with these bigger, more expensive RFAs. Uh, Walker Doer can walk out the door. Brandon Duhame can also go. So can Jack Studnika. That's fine by me. Don't worry about signing anybody else. Is there a trick to downloading my 23 community roster next block? You know, I've had a lot of people say they couldn't find it. Um, I'll check in a little bit to see what the hell is going on with it. Um, although, if you are on the... you got to make sure that you're on the uh, Series S, Series X version of the game, I think is what some people discovered. Um, all of these dudes are gone. Gergensons, Martinook, Weisbach... Dryden Hunt, Rocco Grimaldi, uh, even Mutter, hate to say it, you're going to go. We will sign Marcel Marcel to his ELC. Grimaldi will probably be back. We let him go before and then brought him back again. Uh, Fantasy, I will hold off on Condalik. Condalik. 25. Man, this guy's a big boy, too. At 25 points in 82 games this past season. He's not particularly good at anything. He's just very well-rounded. That's a pretty fair contract. That said, the next contract I have to sign that is not an ELC, because I can't do the ELC, uh, is overpay. Which means I'd have to offer him $2 million. So we'll uh, we'll think about that one. Uh, Leas Anderson is gone. Jake Evans, who was a waiver pickup, is gone. We're going to let go of Cody Glass. It just has not worked out for Cody Glass here, unfortunately. Uh, Mark Jankowski will be signing Mr. Wood to his ELC. He is very close to NHL already. Uh, Jasper Weatherby, I actually want to keep as well. So I can decide, Condalik or Weatherby, who's the overpay. And you know what? We will... We will overpay Condalik two million for a year, and that would knock out the overpay stipulation that I now have to follow. And in general, I think I just want to keep Jasper Weatherby. I mean, he wasn't very good at the NHL. Pay attention, no move, no trades. I will for free agency. And he did not do much at the NHL level compared to what he did last time. But he has been a very serviceable player. So, um, and he also wants a pretty fair deal. So, I mean, I'm willing to give you a little bit more to make it a one-year deal so I don't have to commit to you. Uh, Kalen Lind gets his ELC. Honestly, Tyler Peddle, I know he's a high AHL top six, but we'll hold on to him too. Anthony Angelo can go. Uh, Matthew Ward. Sixth rounder for us. Uh, just with that potential, there's no way. Uh, oof. Milton Oscarson, big boy, but he's already 22 years old. I'm, yeah, you know what? Whatever. Let's, let's give him the LC. Screw it. Uh, Joe Willis as well is only a 64. This sure we don't have to worry about. Okay. So for the most part, it's just going to be the right timing with RFAs that we have to find here, which will be to qualify them late. So that way they don't accept an offer early on. Weatherby is here. Condalik is indeed the overpay. So that is good. Yeah, we still have some stuff to do here. 
Willis is on. Pedal. Marcel Marcel. Dylan McKinnon. Kalen Lind. Matthew Wood. Milton Oscarson. All right, so for the most part, we just got to go to the final day. Don't lose your focus or concentration. Final day. Go to contracts. Qualify our RFAs. And that way, they didn't have as much time to potentially accept very, very expensive contracts is the uh, game plan. But we're going to keep all these guys, because why not? Why the hell not? I love the Admirals logo. The Admirals logo is one of my favorites like in all of sport, not just uh, not just hockey. Okay. So. Step number one. Coaching staff. Ryan Suter. Oh, wow. Bentley got worse. We're going to say goodbye to Bentley. Again, I'm allowed to do whatever I want for the most part with coaches. We have to offer Ryan Suter all the money in the world. Is he a good coach? Fuck. Oh, because someone utilized the Gretzky. He does have good teaching, but that is not exactly who you want as an NHL head coach. I'm going to offer him the maximum amount of money that I can. And former Pred, Ryan Suter, will hopefully be our new head coach. But yeah, that's uh, that's not great. We also lost that half-decent goalie coach. Okay. He'll be fired within the year. I mean, we'll see if people elect to use the coach firing anymore now that it might actually benefit me. Uh, let's go AHL associate. I doubt this guy accepts. Can I taxis here to save me from having to... Technically, you could. He has to be hired first, though. He has to be hired first. But again, yeah, I mean, if someone wanted to be helpful, sure. Fire the guy. Um, because obviously it's not very beneficial to me to have him as our coach. I'm just going to send out multiple offers for the same position. And hopefully that works out for us pretty well. Including old Barry Reese, our former someone else who uh, got a taxi called for him last season. Good old Barry. All right, we have three scouting spots right now. But a few more A's than that. So let's see if we can upgrade our scouting department. What's the rule on wasting points tonight? Uh, chat set the precedent with a poll. You have to be... A, Around the proper timing, like using a suspension in the off season, you probably wasted it. So aim aim to time it correctly with what's going on. Like if I'm like, oh hey, I'm gonna explore a trade, then yeah, that's the time to just put Melnick rule, you know, that type of thing. That is what chat elected to do. Honestly, I'm going to fire all of these B scouts. Really quick. Once I get the scouting department set, I also have to fire a random scout that's currently on our to-do list. And one of our players will be getting an X-Factor, which is great. Um, you could also argue that's misused, but at the same time, it's, it's too expensive. I mean, it's just more so we want to get our roster set. So that's the deal for coaching. We have a lot of money to spend. <laughs> a lot. Of money to spend. Who's out there for free agents. Knowing that we have to go after an RFA as well. We'll look at UFAs first. So goalie wise. We elected to keep UC Soros. So obviously. Nobody major that we have to look at. Barnison. We used him in the Toronto series. It honestly looks like Barnison's good enough to be the backup. So I. Don't really think we have to worry about a major goalie, if I can find a prospect, maybe. Cali, ooh, Cali Clang. Now, the risk with getting a goalie who's already at minor league starter is if they improve enough to become a backup, it just means I end up having to trade them anyway, and that will negatively affect the team morale. Uh, there is Gage Alexander. Big, big goalie. 
Drafted by the Ducks. It's 22. Anybody else with this listed role? Uh, Nick Malik. Malek. Anybody else? Thomas Milich. Okay, there are there are a couple of younger goalies that we could go for. RFA wise, I mean Ottinger, Askarov, who of course is ours already. Lucan and Hunter Jones. Okay, so we won't go with uh, for our one goalie signing. We won't go with an actual good player. We'll go, I think, probably with Gage Alexander, given that he's twenty two years old. Most of the other guys were twenty three. Thomas Milich is out there as well, but I kind of like the idea of a goalie that's six foot seven, because I think Metzger, who we were forced to draft, is also six seven. Uh, there's also Rasmus Korhonen, but uh, well, Levi Marilainen, he was a bit too good though. I went too far. Let's go for Gage Alexander. Let's do it. Uh, we'll offer that guy max money because I don't have anything to do right now in terms of max money. So that'll be our goalie signing, which means either a defenseman or a forward have to be our RFA approach in terms of UFA defensemen. I mean, Ekblad, Chikrin, Klingberg, there are some pretty damn good defensemen out there. Obviously, if we get into talking with UFAs, you start to talk about no trade clauses and no movement clauses. Do we have any younger options? Zach Jones, former Ranger. Alec Regula's back out there at 24. A couple of 23-year-olds that are minor league top twos. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Ekblad to pair with the OC. Well, we do have to take a look at our defense as it stands. Uh, which would have Roman Yossi on the left. Ghost can be on either side. Lore is on the left. We know Thompson's on the right. Honestly, we don't even have room for a top four defenseman. Like our top four set with the four that we have. It's just whether or not now, like Willsby, Olsen, these guys will improve enough to be proper medium top six defensemen. That complicates things a little bit for our big free. Man, it might have to be the forward for the big RFA. It might have to be. Who are the defensive RFAs? Sam Bolduc, Isaac Phillips, Simon Lundmark. I think Bolduc is the only one that would require a draft pick. Again, it has to be someone that requires a draft pick. That's why it's expensive. Offer sheet compensation, so at least $1.55 million for at least a third rounder. I mean, Bolduc's a bit of a risk because he could end up being better. Lefty. I mean, if he were to improve to a medium top four defenseman, it would mean Mason Lore gets traded. Don't necessarily want to give up a third round pick for Sam Bolduc. Uh, so defensively, it is either Bolduc. Again, we're only allowed to sign one person right now. If they match, does that count as executing it? That's a good question. Uh, that's a good question because in my head. I feel like I should still just have to go for it, but we might eventually run out of options, you know? Were there any prospects? Were there any prospects that were half decent? I know, like, Wagula was there at 24. It was this Damon Hunt. So if it's not Bullduk, then you're talking about Someone like Damon Hunt. Gong Show, what's going on? I'm doing quite well. How are you? Jaden Struble's out there. I said, just kind of having to take inventory. Topi Niemela. I am, Crash. I am. And I still feel terrible. 
but I love you nonetheless. All right. Forwards. UFA is Pavel Bushnevich, Steven Stamkos. A lot of second line forwards. A lot of second line forwards. A lot of third line guys too. Patrick Kane now down to a third line level. We are again looking to see if there's any good young talent. How many seasons in are we? We're heading into our fourth season. Just hoping to see. Like Sam Poulan as a fourth liner. He, he could be worth it. Could be worth it. I don't know if he's worth like the big signing. Is Voronkov as well? Anybody else is kind of in that mix? Ferrier, former blue. Tanner should know for the memes. I uh, wouldn't mind bringing back a face puncher. Pahiti is there. Hmm. There really isn't that go-to guy in terms of a prospect that could flourish on our team because he could play in a higher role. That just doesn't seem to exist outside of like Jan Mizak. Oh, other forward already. I was going to say, holy shit. Who are the RFA forwards? Okay, so obviously Evangelista and Tomasino are ours, as is Olison. But we'd be looking at Shane Pinto. Jake, what's going on? Alex Turcott. I mean, Pinto or Turcott. Based on the money. Or Michael Rasmussen. For that much money, I'd rather jump off a bridge. So, we're looking at Pinto slash Turcott as a forward or Poulin and Leferriere. Honestly, I, I would lean towards Pinto or Turcott. I would lean towards Pinto or Turcotte, and then on defense, go with uh, one of the younger guys. 33 points for Turcotte last year. Pretty well-rounded. He's not physical at all. His shooting category, if what we know of it, is not very good. And then there's Pinto. Pretty similar point total for Shane Pinto. Here's to have a better shot. As Crash Andrews implements an overpay. You can't name specifically who, Crash, but you probably did just get your boy a little bit more money. And that will probably also secure the fact that we'll succeed in this offer sheet. Let's go look at Ottawa and uh, Los Angeles. Also, having to overpay on an RFA is brutal. Although, technically, I could overpay the uh, rando defenseman. Um, Los Angeles has all the cap space in the world. Ottawa does not. It has to be Pinto. It has to be Pinto because more than likely, Los Angeles can match for Turcotte. Ottawa probably can't match for Shane Pinto. So what we're going to do is on the defensive side of things. We are going to go for one of the younger guys and overpay them in the process. It's either going to be Damon Hunt, Casper Putio, Jaden Struble, or Topi Niemela. Um, Niemela had 38 points as a Marley last season. Struble had 36 points for the Laval Rockets. Putio did not do well in Cleveland from an offensive standpoint. And Damon Hunt struggled. What side? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, thankfully. Is that the Topani Emila or Jaden Struble? We're not going to know much about him due to a lack of AHL scouts. So, Crash, the Melnick rule is that when I'm looking for a trade, you can implement that. And when we go through Trade Finder, so say I get 38 offers, 
if when I'm talking about making a trade, you implement Melnick rule, I do uh, pick a number between 1 and 38, and whatever number it lands on, I have to accept that trade. So, the yeah, exclamation point rules is the place to go. I have explanations on all of it. You know, I feel like I've used Topin Yamala a few times. Can I use it to trade for Turcot's rights? No, you cannot. <laughs> I feel like I haven't used Jaden Struble, but we did use Topin Yamala in the uh, Toronto series for a little bit. I think I'm going to go for Jaden Struble. Is there? There is. Uh, I mean, crash. Just look over the goddamn rules for a second. Why do I have to explain this to you? What makes you so special? Um, so Jaden Struble on a one year deal wants 1.7 and five. So we are going to have to offer him because of the overpayment from crash Andrews. That's going to fetch $1.8 million for Jaden Struble. So that is our overpayment. And then let's see, we have our forced offer sheets. I have to sign someone who's going to cost me draft picks. It has to be Shane Pinto. Uh, it would be very wise for it to be a two-year deal. I can only go from a three to a one. As catcher implements cap whale, which I had a feeling that was coming as well. Um, which, again means we have to sign an intentionally bad contract, which could be even more devastating. So with Cap Whale, yeah, it can't be stacked. So Pinto doesn't, Pinto's not an inherently bad contract. That just means I have to sign somebody else who is looking for that bad contract. Time out, you handsome, handsome devil. What are you doing up so late? You're normally not up this late. Good to see you, my friend. They haven't seen the thumbnail for this yet, at least on the Twitch side. Okay. Um, so the cap whale thing came through. Late shift. Last one of five. Don't want Ah, fair. Fair, fair, fair. Well, we're happy to have you here. So cap whale came in a little bit late. I think how we'll do this is to say that I'm allowed to sign four players in this little window instead of just three, with one of them being the cap whale. The alternative is to wait until there's really no one left who would be considered a bad contract. So, um, let's figure out the Pinto deal. Ottawa, as far as I recall, did not have $4 million to spend. They have no money to spend. So as long as there's no current competition. As long as there is no competition. We can likely pick him up. Yeah, Ottawa is the only team interested. So we will go with that two year deal of four million. And I hope that works out. That'll cost us a second round pick. Crash with the fiver. I'm not trading for Turcotte for $5. No. Shane Pinto. We'll get that offer in there. For him. For the RFA. We got the overpay in Struble. I know it's real money, but it's not that much real money. I can't even guarantee that I could trade for him within the boundaries of the series crash because I have to use the trade finder and real money doesn't break that. They don't even have him on the block because they don't want to get rid of him. I'm not doing that. No. I'm also not trading RFA for RFA. No. Absolutely not. At no point did I say, give me money and I'll make a specific trade. And if I did, it would have been more than $5. I got a wedding to pay for. God damn it. God damn it. Anyway, we do have to sign a cap whale. So the question is, what is an inherently bad contract? There it is. There's that inherently bad contract. $8 million to Kyle Palmieri. 
I don't think you can top that for a bad contract. If we do sign a capital during the season, we have to sign a capital right there and then it is a waste of points. It's probably more of an off season one. It is probably more of an off season one. I mean, middle of the season is very, very tough. I mean, because we probably already have our cap situation solved, right? So, yeah, there is another team going for Paul Mary as well. Uh, he fits the cap whale description very, very well. You could also argue John Klingberg, but we don't have space for him. That's the difference. Um, that is inherently the worst contract is Kyle Paul Mary, and I have room for him. So, uh, yeah, we have to do this. We have to do this. I, AJ, I don't remember. I could check, but it's Arizona that's interested. Fuck's sake. <sighs> okay. So really quickly, we would have to find out a bidding war for Kyle Palmieri at $8 million. Yeah. So it might as well be the two. The question is, when I offer Kyle Palmieri this contract, he's eligible for a no movement clause. For either zero years, so no no movement clause whatsoever, one of the two, or both. How long am I going to have to stay loyal to Kyle Palmieri if I sign this deal? Oh, thank God. We can sign him without a no movement. <sighs> so we could sign him without a no movement. So that's good. The problem is, who the hell is going to want to trade for him? Because I got to offer like 9 million bucks for the two years to make sure we get him over Arizona. So that's the uh, that's the cap whale for catcher is Kyle Palmieri, two years, 9 million. Good God. So we were allowed one extra free agent signing because of that, because it's not a very positive one. Jesus. Is that the guards? No rule. Tempted. The uh, Lamorello rule would be to give someone seven to eight years minimum. So, all right, with that, I think we are good to wait for the next portion of what we got going on. Uh, Kyle Palmieri is going to be fucking expensive. <laughs>